start your senior class, a small group, but they've contributed a lot, especially this year, uh, to celebrate them before the game. Just how special was that? It was great, and I'm glad we recognize the guys who have graduated as well. It, it's such a convoluted or, or tough thing to judge who's a senior, who's not, in baseball in general because of the draft. But then you throw in the COVID complications, and it, it's kind of awkward. And just the way that it worked out in a nice, neat box for us was four guys that I believe all came in at the same time and have all contributed a ton. All, you know, I mean, look at what they've done. They've, they've represented the program on and off the field and um, just been a part of a lot of different things. Pretty, pretty cool story uh, that their career will, will read as from start to finish. And it's, it's funny, you get to see them mature, usually from freshman to sophomore year or first year in school to second year is the biggest jump. But all those kids made a lot of progression not that they started out in a bad spot, but the progression was was very uh, stark to, to notice. How did that play a role in the uh, pitching rotation too? I saw after that last out you brought in the senior. Yeah, I mean, Ethan too. I mean, he's only been with us for a short while, but um, th there was definitely kind of some boxes we wanted to check. And, and those guys are capable of getting outs. And I think if, you know, at one point in the season, we thought we could roll a second lineup out there and look like an SEC group. We talked about that when we played Iona, but um, you know, without without the effort we had as a team, we would have left some boxes unchecked, and they kind of bailed me out. And it feels good to involve guys the way that you'd like to on paper, or at least the numbers work out in a certain way. How nice was it to get a win like that for them on this special day? It was great, and I mean, you end it with C. Scott making the catch the way he did, and you could feel it. I mean, maybe we should just do that every game is what I was thinking, because the vibe, there was something going on. I don't know if having the Sunday off or we, we've been put in this little rhythm where we're used to Thursday, Friday, Saturday now. Um, but their attitude when they showed up to the park was we're going to win this game. We're relaxed. We're having fun, but we're also focused. And that's important because you're, you're kind of searching for your best combination of, of being relaxed and focused. And you're never going to find the perfect one. But as the year goes on, it should get better and better. And I think they kind of unlock something today. And a lot of it probably just has to do with putting school in the rear view mirror, putting a poor weekend in the rear view mirror, uh, a lot of other lessons learned. And, um, you know, it's just time to play ball. And the, these stats and everything, all that's kind of been decided. I think we've already voted on or will vote on all conference and all. Like, there's a lot of things that you can now set aside. And it's like you were a kid in Little League. During the summer, you, you just go play. And sometimes you might play two or three games in one day and be covered in mud because you were sweating in the dirt. Um, so here we are in that time. That it's it's a fun time. Do you like where your team's at going into the final weekend of the regular season? Yeah, I think what you got was out of today, um, you know, th those guys are going to be a little more fresh. That's just a fact. I mean, they, they only played four or five innings. And then some of those guys need repetitions in the middle of a game. So if we need them to come out of the bullpen, pinch hit, pinch run, play defense, they've been there. And uh, we were able to combine both of those things into one game, which is even more important on the rest side because of the – you know, Thursday start to the series for every team now in the SEC. So, but I thought you were just going to say, do you like where the team's at now? I mean, Mabry back to looking like himself. Um, Simo went through like a very brief period where he was slamming his bat for the first time ever. I was kind of joking. You, you short on confidence, which is he ain't ever going to be short on confidence. But a, a few guys have kind of gone through some stuff and I think have come out on the other side stronger. And I, you know, I definitely feel good about that. That's the, the, the question that ever made it in the game. Y'all are up 18 0, it's a midweek game. It, he's out there making a play like that. I mean, is that sort of what this team's about in some ways? I think I think a lot of it is what he's about, but again, I don't think he was like that his first year. And I'm, I'm not here to tell you that we took this young piece of clay that was no good and turned it into something great. But the, the kid has always just been hooked up as a teammate. His role's been very kind of bouncing, you know, here and there his, his whole time here. And he's turned himself into a really mature dude, very physical, just a, a well-rounded baseball player. And you saw him make the play at Florida when the game is on the line, and yet you see him make the play when the game is not on the line, like you said. I think it says a lot about the kid, and the program has helped him be like that. And in combination, you've got a bunch of kids that are in our program that are like that. So I think it represents the team, yeah. Has it been harder to get some of the young developmental pitchers midweek innings with just how good the starting pitching is and kind of pushing some of your usual weekend relievers to have to pitch in the midweek? Yeah, I mean, you're kind of taking Xander out well before you should. I think this could have been, um, you know, it's easy to say now, but 
very well he could have had in his back pocket seven or eight five inning outings this year for us. But and you take the ball from the guy and he's just you know first of all all lefties are goofy, but he's always hunky dory and on to the next guy and you try and involve as many of them as you can. But yeah, I, I think as you look at our numbers, they're they're pretty even. Frank said he's never really had a staff when the team is good where the numbers kind of look like they do if you look at our stat sheet. And overall, I think we have a lot of guys that are ready to go and do not have an excuse. They don't have experience. And we have some guys creeping up, too, that might be able to be on that expanded roster in the SEC tournament and be ready to go. And then your best guys, I think, are fairly fresh, as fresh as you can be this deep into the year if, again, you've pitched on a team that's had some success. What have these uh, midweek games taught you the most? Um, you, you know, I, I think the depth is real. When you go into the season, everybody's deep. You know, you're in the fall and you're like, man, who's going to win the battle at this position or that position? And, or we got a lot of arms that can help us. And inevitably, most coaches will say, let's see in May if that's the case. Uh, because there's just guys remove themselves by either not working or getting frustrated or they get nervous in game situations or maybe they're not as good as you thought or they're young and they need more time. And this is a group that I think has real depth. So we're fortunate enough to keep guys off their legs or maybe not wear guys out or lean on one too many guys. Um, and then, too, we can, we can play our hand. I told them out there in the outfield, I talked too long as I'm doing with you guys now, too, but when you're, when you're making changes or lineups, you're just trying to predict the future. And there ain't any of us can do that. So um, in one way, coaches are like weather men uh, or women. That's my best if I was going to do stand-up. So I'm not, I'm not knocking. The weather's tough to predict, and so is whether a guy's going to get a hit or not. So, um, you, you know, just make sure your hat, your name is in the hat. And all these guys have stuck with work, stuck with being a good teammate. Um, you know, the repetitions have been good that they've been out there. So there's a bunch of names in the hat, and we pick out the ones we think are right. And if, if it goes well, you look smart. And if it doesn't, you don't. But we're fortunate enough to have a lot of good players. So you look smart when you start a guy like Ben Joyce out of nowhere and he looks like he can he can really do it. So going to Mississippi State this weekend, Coach, I mean, they haven't had the record they have from last year. I know they're still the defending champs. What do you expect from your team this weekend and from them? I think to look forward to get back on the road and do better than we did last time we went on the road because, you know, it, it's something that we had had success before that weekend. Um, but also, you just look forward to road trips in general. But this one's kind of different. You, you're going to go to Hoover after that. And again, school's out. You don't have that weighing you down. We've become a close-knit team. So I, I think they'll look forward to just being around each other if you're just going to go trip on the whole. But you're asking about on the field. I would assume, and I know what I'm looking for, is just play better than we did the last road trip. Um, and so there, there's your challenge. On top of, you got to play in Starkville. you got to play in front of uh, a bunch of people in a huge stadium. And that roster is plenty good. It's just our league, sometimes things get going one way or the other on you. And, and the roster we'll see this weekend will be plenty good. What is the mindset going into this final SEC series? Um, again, I, I think that's to pick up from that. That's part of it, but also to just win the series. Um, that's what they'll be trying to do. There'll be other people that maybe are trying to accomplish some different goals. Um, you know, win so you can host or win so you're in a tournament of some sort or line up your pitching the way you want. Uh, but I think we put some things in the rearview mirror for us the last two weekends. So for us, it should be about going down there and just trying to play good ball. Coach, how big was it for Seth to have a couple leafy yards tonight for his confidence, you know, Hoover right around the corner? Well, it was, it was good, but if you look at it on video, and I think I heard him even say it in the dugout, he took his shortest swings of the last few weeks and hit the ball over the fence. And guys were joking on the Basilio show today about him hitting the ball on the ground more now, taking walks, not over swinging for a guy that's a leadoff type hitter. And he can still hit the ball out of the park, but he doesn't have to try to do it. So that was my favorite part of the whole deal. So he obviously had a great night defensively and offensively, but those swings were really short. And uh, the ball went, came off hot, and it, it went far. Did you have one? Coach, let's ask you about the pitching for this weekend. Do you have any time to? Yeah, I think we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, honestly, no, honestly, uh, the one thing we said for sure is Dolander will start, and then we'd regroup after tonight. A lot of guys were throwing in the bullpen. You probably saw a lot of activity if you're watching. We had a lot of guys set up to either come in the game or if not, at least that was their work. Um, so now that the game went the way that it did, we're going to circle up and decide who's traveling and who's starting where. So. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate